You're tuned into the Mid-10 Listens Podcast, hosted by MiddleTennesseeMusic.com. Supporting and empowering the independent music community online since 2011. Head on over to our website to find more music, as well as to learn about our Indie Musicpreneurs Tribe, where we share our library of tips and guides on business, entrepreneurship, productivity, social media, digital marketing, email marketing, websites, and much more. You can also check out our book, Getting Your Music Heard Online, now on Amazon as a paperback and Kindle. Welcome to another episode of the Mid-10 Listens Podcast, MiddleTennesseeMusic.com. I'm your host, Joshua Smotherman, and today we're tuning in with Mary Satoli. We're going to talk about her music, challenges, influences, all that good stuff. Let's just jump right into it. How you doing, Mary? I hope all's well on your side of the screen. Tell us where you're from and what style of music do you create, and explain that in your own words, not necessarily marketing terms or... Gen- uh, Genre, traditional genre classification. Sorry, I couldn't get that hey out. There. My name is Mary Satoli. I'm a singer-songwriter. I was born in upstate New York and I grew up in Seattle, Washington. I've been pretty much all over the map given that I was on the road in the Midwest. Uh, probably one of the biggest educations of a lifetime to travel in below zero weather and snow, uh, storms and ice and deer country so it was uh, pretty fascinating especially during a time that we didn't have cell phones so uh, I had an opportunity to learn a lot during those years and I would say that my music I don't like to label things because today's world is so labeled and we've changed genres names EDM pop is now different and countries now pop and so I don't even know how to label myself anymore I wouldn't know how it's a uh, kind of a little bit of rock a little bit of pop a little bit of folk a little bit of kind of everything so um, you might want to just check it out a couple minutes of it if you can't handle it it's probably not up your alley but <laughs> if you can then you'll probably like it tell us a little about uh, what led you down this path of music and what has kept you going and motivated all these years I would say I have an older sister who is a fabulous singer and when I was growing up she did a lot of musical comedy, she was a ballet dancer, fabulous gymnast, she did everything really well and I sat back and watched and through osmosis I think I learned a lot of things. I finally begged my parents to buy me a piano for a number of years and by the time I was about 11 I finally convinced them that I would practice and use it but uh, they bought me some old rickety upright thing that had all the ivories missing. I learned on wood keys <laughs> and I think it was a big uh, opportunity for me to learn a lot of things through my sister that I wouldn't have ordinarily learned had I not grown up in the same family with somebody that was so mega talented and it was a lot to live up to but it pushed me forward to keep being better and more diverse and more uh, attuned as a performer and songwriter. I learned a lot from her, I really did. And we worked together for a number of years. Uh, She was on the road with me out of the Twin Cities in the Midwest. And I think I just, when we parted ways and I went my own direction, I think what just kept motivating me was my passion for music and I think that that if you do anything in life you need to do what you're passionate about otherwise you're going to lose interest and you're going to have a lot of disappointments that are going to set you off uh, wishing you hadn't done something because you just underneath it all you're not loving it the way that you do when you really are passionate about something and I just think that when I was a kid I felt this was something that I could do relatively well and um, it just felt home. It just felt home to me. And you, everyone, I think, needs to find that part of their bliss that just feels like when you do it, time doesn't exist, nothing else exists in your, your reality. So I found music. That was my bliss. Tell us how your latest release is different from things you've released in the past. Were you setting out to accomplish anything specific on this project? I think that what makes this particular CD project so uh, incredibly different from every other one that I've done, uh, which has been 
a number now, uh, singles and CDs, is that I didn't expect to live to see this day. A um, little bit about my story, brief, try to make it brief. It's not really brief, <laughs> but I'll try to make it brief. Anyway, I was put on an anxiety medication in 1998-99, and uh, I was one of the unfortunate 30% of the population that will react poorly to these uh, drugs. Uh, the doctors are really not aware of the problem and the magnitude of the problem at this point. I think we're about to find out very soon with all the opioid crisis and everything that's going on. I think the uh, mental health medications are far, far worse in a lot of ways because it's almost become a, a drug campaign in itself where uh, so many people are not being recognized by doctors and uh, family members and that sort of thing as having uh, problems with these medications. and so. There is a group of us that have um, band together online and started support groups. I have a nonprofit organization that I founded after I came off the medications almost two years ago. Um, it was one of the most brutal experiences I've ever had in my life. Uh, you're not well informed about these drugs. The doctors do not tell you the side effects that it can have and that it can be worse for a lot of people, many people to come off of than heroin and I was not prepared for the withdrawal. Um, my life totally came unraveled. I think we've seen a lot of other musicians like Michael Jackson, Chris Cornell, um, Whitney Houston, just to name a few over the last several years who have been um, unfortunately not so lucky to live through their uh, prescription dependencies. and. I don't like to call them addictions because we all took these drugs that were prescribed by a doctor that we trusted and we didn't know the ramifications like you do when you shoot, uh, shoot heroin or you take cocaine or whatever. We know those are street drugs and it's um, pretty much bashed into our head how dangerous those are, but we're being encouraged by the Ask Your Doctor campaign to uh, take these drugs. So um, I have a foundation that is set up to educate the public and help these people who are trying to recover their lives after this. It was extremely difficult for me to get back into a place where I was doing well enough that I could sing again. It took me a year, uh, this last year and a half pretty much, to uh, relearn all my original stuff and to get my voice back on track enough that I could, I could do another CD. So it was more than just a CD to me. It was rediscovering who I was without these medications after being on them for such a long time. And it was about healing. I, I didn't really have any, any motivation to really uh, do anything with it other than to just create for my own healing purposes. It was really important to me to get my soul and my heart back. And that is my part of my soul. And so, uh, what I do is I've taken all of my music down off of uh, iTunes, everywhere on the internet. I've got a few YouTube videos up on my channel uh, that supports my nonprofit. If you are interested in um, seeing my, I have a whole slew of podcasts on what my songs are about, uh, music videos that I've done, um, stories I've written. I have three screenplays that I wrote, musicals, while I was uh, recovering from all this over the last decade. And um, they were inspired by a friend of mine who passed away, who was a great animated illustrator. And it's kind of an interesting story in itself. So I have a lot of things on that on the Patreon channel. It's a place where you can get a monthly membership for as little as a dollar a month. You can support our cause and have an opportunity to get my music at patreon.com, follow your bliss foundation. Um, you can Google us. I have a website and I'll probably have you post some, some links to where you can find my stuff. So um, that's kind of the short of my story, but uh, I didn't want to kind of go on about it. But it is a serious problem because a lot of people are being disabled from these drugs and our disability system is assuming about a 30% higher increase of disability cases because of these drugs which were pr 
pretty, pretty much more readily acceptable beginning in the late 80s and 90s, which is when uh, a lot of people I know were put on them, including myself. So um, that's just a little bit about me. What are some of the challenges you face as an independent musician in this oversaturated, digitized world we've been thrown into? And obviously, since t technology does help, it's helping us right now. Um, how has it helped you? I think the challenges facing most independent musicians today are a different set than what we faced, say, 20, 30, 40 years ago, however long you've been in the business. but. Um, we didn't have the internet. We had to go out and work live to get exposure. Uh, we were fortunate enough to have a hit record out of the Minneapolis St. Paul market. So I was lucky that I got tons of airplay and some exposure so it helped us get bookings. Um, I, I have done a lot of things, worked with uh, producers from RCA Record as an apprentice writer uh, when I was starting out so I had a lot of good footing. Um, today, I think the difference is, most artists will say, is how to get yourself out there because there's so much now. There, there wasn't the, uh, um, I want to say it's not competition to me because I think everybody's their own competition. It's kind of like you are you and you shouldn't be emulating anybody else if you're an artist because that's what art is. It's your own unique identity and how you express yourself to the world through your art or music or whatever it is your genre is but I uh, I think that it is just that people have a shorter attention span uh, they're bombarded on the internet we're kind of learning to tune out email the same way we did with commercials on television and we're just too busy and overwhelmed with all the technology and I have had to try to simplify my life down to just my desktop and phone and not have all these gadgets and toys because otherwise I'm texting everybody and their brother and they're texting me and I can't handle all the noise. So um, I just think there are different sets of challenges. There's always challenges in life for anything worthwhile that you want to do because nothing worthwhile comes without a price or at least some devotion. Uh, you have to spend some time if you want something. And I think it happens differently for every musician. I think it's really humbling to see the amount of really incredible players that are out there right now. But unfortunately, the internet has created a lot of what I call knob turners that really aren't musicians. They're, they're making music and they're tech savvy and it kind of puts those of us who aren't super tech savvy at a disadvantage because I was not a social media junkie. I'm still not. I have social media pages, but for me, it was just seemed like more stimulation that I didn't need. <laughs> I'm a one-on-one -on -one person and I've had a really hard time making this jump because I came from the lifestyle that you had to play your instrument. There was no pitch enhancement. You had to sing on tune. You had to play your instrument. And it was live. <laughs> it wasn't Memorex. It was always live. And so it, it's, it's a different uh, set of challenges, I think. But I have learn to adapt and I am this year hopefully going to be preparing for next year to do a live show. Uh, I didn't expect I'd be, be even doing a CD so this is a big, uh, a big opportunity uh, for me to be finishing this. We're just getting ready to release our fifth track from the CD called Play It Safe and I have a new one out that I don't think I've released to a lot of places yet because it just was finished a few weeks ago. So it's really exciting. One of the benefits of the internet is it's allowed me to connect with publishers and licensing place and film and TV and things that weren't available to us. We had to mail everything out snail mail and hope that they would listen to it. And nine times out of ten it just went in the garbage because everybody was sending their stuff to the same place. So it does have advantages and disadvantages I found. So you've got to kind of if you're a D DIY, like what do you call it, <laughs> to yourself, I think the best thing you can do is just sort through the garbage that's not working for you, what's driving you crazy, what doesn't work for you, and find what feels right. Go with your, your gut because I think that's the best thing to do. And then to try to uh, work on that and stay with it until another direction becomes apparent to you. Because I've always found that 
that when I least expect something, all of a sudden I get an email from someplace and I had some openings recently with a company and